Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's uh, great to be able to welcome you to Coho's Christian Healing Center. Uh, great to welcome those uh, who are joining us online. And um, uh, I'm going to ask Esther to put a, a picture up of um, uh, four, four wonderful looking gentlemen. Um, there you go. <laughs> it's to, to advertise our moustaches, really. Uh, during the month of November, um, the four of us, um, Dave, Trevor, Ian and I have been trying to grow um, moustaches to draw attention to um, the month of Movember, Movember um, to draw attention to men's health. And um, uh, so we will be thinking about that during the course of the service. It's St. Andrew's Day today um, in the church calendar, so we'll be thinking a bit about St. Andrew, but there will be an occasion for us to pray specifically for, um, uh, for, for men and for men's health issues, um, as well as praying for, for, all, for all people, that's what we like to do here. But it's lovely to welcome you, um, and it's lovely to see um, some, uh, some men in the congregation as well, and it's lovely to see some women in the congregation. <laughs> <laughs> grace, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Just turn to somebody and say, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This wonderful greeting that Paul um, uses encompasses all the blessings that are ours as, as members of God's covenant family. They encompass all the blessings, that grace and peace. And so our prayer is that we would know that grace and peace um, even now. Uh, let us pray. Father, thank you that it is your desire for us to, um, to know and experience your grace and your peace. And we pray, Lord, that, that in this uh, time of worship that we would, we would experience and, and enjoy a fresh understanding, a fresh revelation, a fresh experience of your grace and peace to us. As we worship you, as we hear your word, as we reflect on where we are and the needs of those around us and the needs of the world. So come Holy Spirit of God and rest on us we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may not know, my name's Steve. I serve on the chaplaincy team here, surrounded by some amazing folk who, um, who serve on the team here um, with me. We're going to begin our worship by singing, Come. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give our hearts. Um, Dave's speaking later, and he's going to be, the, the title of his sermon is Jump in the River, uh, because we couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> but there is something about the invitation is to come, and the invitation is to jump into the river. Jump into the river of the grace and the love of God that is being poured out from the throne of God. Um, would you want to jump into that river? So the invitation is, come. Let us jump into the river. Come. Now is the time to worship. Thanks, Roland. It's great to have Roland on the keys and Esther on those keys.
as we sing that song, uh, the words that jump out at me are, just as you are, come just as you are. It's one of the reasons why so many um, suffer with, with health issues is we, we, we come with a, a facade, we come with a mask, we come trying to hide who we are. Um, and I think the Lord invites us to be vulnerable to, before Him, to come as you are. If there are issues, if there is pain, if there's grief, if there's this ease, bring it to the Lord. The invitation is to come. Come just as you are. And if there is some specific thing on your heart or mind this morning, about where you are at personally, and tell the Lord right now. Tell Him how you're feeling. Don't hold back. Let's look to this God, this God who is our our vision, this God who is our help, this God who, who loves us so much and wants us to know healing and restoration. So we sing, God, I look to you. Thank you. 
open the eyes of our hearts that we may see you. Open, the, open our eyes, Lord, to see you, the God who we look to, the God who we know we need, the God who, who promises to help, who bends down to us, who stoops to come among us to help, to restore. Oh Lord, we look to you. Help us to see things like you do, Lord. Help us to see ourselves like you do. Not with the mask on, not with the I'm going to be brave today on. But help us to see ourselves the way you do, Lord. Help us to see the lion inside of us as well as the lamb, the strong as well as the vulnerable. And thank you for your example, Lord Jesus. You have shown strength and you have shown weakness. You have set an example. We come just as we are, Lord. And we worship you because you are such an extraordinary, amazing God. Thank you for revealing yourself to us the way you have, as the lion and the lamb. We will worship you, Lord God, as our King. Let's sing the splendor of the King.
Let's pause for a few moments of silence before the presence of our King, before the presence of the one who's revealed himself as the Lion of Judah and the Lamb that was slain. Holy Spirit, please rest on each one of us. Meet us at our point of need in our weakness and our frailty as well as in our, our strength and our courage. Please meet us, Lord. And help us, we pray, to jump in the river jump in the river of your delight, to jump in the river that enables us to receive all that you would have us receive. Have your way, Lord. Help me, help us to surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, Father God, come and have your way. Worship you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Take a seat, folk, and I'm going to invite Dave to show us about Andrew. Can I peel it off now? <laughs> I was hoping to get to the handlebar stage quite got there. <laughs> so, should we do another month? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Good to see you all too. Um, we're going to look at uh, an example uh, from the life of Andrew, as uh, Steve has mentioned. And um, this is actually, yes, it's St. Andrew's Day, isn't it? So, anyone from, uh, which is celebrated in Scotland, anyone from a Scottish kind of, sorry? Quarter Scottish, okay, yeah. Anyone else? 
Happy St. Andrew's Day, <laughs> Alison. I don't think I've said that very many times in my life, but uh, <laughs> let's read um, from where uh, this comes from, um, the life of uh, uh, an episode, um, at least initially, in the life of Andrew. <coughs> and so, the next day, the next day, can I stop there? <laughs> the next day. Um, this is actually the third day. John's Gospel starts off, you know, the Word was with God, and then John goes into, um, uh, but basically, uh, he, he, he describes seven days. Um, he's with uh, John the Baptist who says, I'm not the Christ, uh, the one is to come. Then it's the next day, next day, uh, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yep. And now we've got the next day, something about Andrew. The next day is about Nathaniel, and then on the third day, three days after that, in other words, the seventh day, we've got the wedding of Canaan, right? So interesting, John, Jewish background, he's talking about seven days at the, the beginning of his gospel. So on the third day, <coughs> ring a bell, what happened at Genesis on the third day? What got created? Anyone? Testing you now. Sorry? Anyone say? Uh, God created that, well, the seas were divided, the land and the seas, and then fruit-bearing trees. So seas, water, and fruit-bearing trees, interesting. So this happens on the third day, and John's remembering the third day back in Genesis, when God uh, poured out the waters and divided them up into land, sea, and then he created all the vegetation to bring fruit. Coincidence? Don't think so. Let's go on to read. On the third day, something happened on another third day. John was there again with two of his disciples when he saw Jesus passing by. He said, look, the Lamb of God. And when the two disciples, so this is actually, you will find out that one was Andrew and one was probably John himself, heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and you will see. And so they went. Saw. There's lots of seeing and saw, sawing, not sawing, <laughs> in this passage. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Now Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. And the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother, Simon, and tell him, we found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. That's a lovely phrase. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked again, seeing, looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John, called Cephas. Uh, you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. So that's the first uh, episode in the life of uh, Andrew that we uh, encounter in the, in the Bible. And... Um, yeah, so uh, as Steve has said, we, we have been thinking about kind of you know, men's health and uh, we haven't had, uh, coincidentally, that men's weekend last weekend. Uh, there were 12, remember, 12 uh, ring the bell. Uh, Steve and I made it 14, so we kind of spoiled the party a bit. Um, so we um, clearly, being men, <laughs> um, got out this electric set and uh, <laughs> had, had a fire and... Um, uh, and various other things with lots of bacon and sausage consumed. But we, there were serious moments when we challenged each other, really, you know, to, to we encourage each other to be adventurous, take uh, risks, to, get, to follow God, just like Abraham did, and break new ground, you know, for uh, in the Lord, to, to reach out, yeah, not be passive, don't deny our responsibility, which often the culture kind of um, kind of pushes us uh, towards at times, to be strong in the Lord, to follow, follow the servant king, yeah, to fight for uh, truth and justice, but with an inner compassion and following the servant king who washed the feet of those around him, yeah. So we just encourage in various ways, we, we try to, uh, us as, as men, to follow the Lord with all our hearts, but with a, with a gentle inner compassion, which we believe the Lord wants to, uh, us to do. And so... Hi. So we're going to look at, uh, as we've said, uh, Andrew, um, certainly a guy, but uh, uh, certainly and w what, what he did uh, certainly applies to us all, men and women, so we can all learn from him. But 
uh, his name, his name himself. Shall we start with his name? His name means uh, brave. It actually means kind of valiant, uh, sort of manly. That actually, that's what it means uh, in itself. And it says, uh, we read that um, Peter was the son of, uh, in the NIV it says John, but it's really Jonas. John is a derivative, but Jonah, he's the son of Jonah. So the brave one, the son of Jonah. Does that kind of ring any bells? Jonah, who ran away. He ran away from God's calling. And the Lord's calling him and others and us and each one of us not to run away from God's calling, but to face it, to run into, into it with everything that we have. Son of Jonah. And uh, Jonah, uh, this word also means uh, dove. But uh, in, in, the, in the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit and the gentleness of the, of the Holy Spirit to, to, to run towards God uh, and follow him with everything uh, that we have. So a little bit, that's Andrew's kind of background, just in his name and his uh, family. Andrew wasn't a, a good Jewish name, it was a Greek, a Greek name. So he, uh, as we see, he was open. He was open to other cultures, and he brought others to the Lord, uh, Greek, as we will uh, see in a minute. So Andrew, interesting. And I, I looked up the, the church lectionary about different, uh, what readings uh, would, send, would, uh, would there be for proposed for this day, and so different episodes in Andrew's life, clearly, St. Andrew's Day, uh, the Feast of St. Andrew, different psalms. I was really surprised by one of the Old Testament suggestions of reading around this character of Andrew, and I'll read it to you, and you, uh, you will know it very well, but this, was, this is what it was, and it just struck me that it really represented what Andrew's heart and what the Lord wants that should be our heart, and it's found in Ezekiel 47. Do you remember? Does that start to ring any bells? Uh, An angel brought me back, says Ezekiel, to the entrance of the temple. I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. So the brought, he then brought me out through the north gate and led me round outside to the outer gate facing the east. And the water was flowing from this south side. So you get the picture of water flowing, and it goes on. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off about uh, a thousand uh, cubits, which is a half a kilometer, um, and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits, another half a kilometer, so fair way, and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand, another half a kilometer, so it's a one kilometer and a half, and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured up another thousand. And now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. And he asked me, son of man, do you see this? So this ever-increasing river and stream from the temple of God. And then he led me back to the bank of the river. And then I arrived there. I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. And he said to me, Water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. That's like the Jordan Valley, which is kind of uh, arid. Uh, and where it enters the sea. So this is the Dead Sea. And when it empties into the sea, the Dead Sea, full of salt and nothing can live there, the water there becomes fresh, literally in, in the Hebrew, healed. That salty water that could have no life now becomes healed. And swarms, therefore, of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh or healed. So where the river flows, everything will live. And fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Englaim, and there will be places of, for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Great Sea, which is the Mediterranean. And fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, uh, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. This great, glorious river. And uh, you remember um, Revelation chapter 22. From the river, I got the glimpse in, of heaven, of, of the river flowing from the throne of God. Again, it's, it's kind of the same picture and the leaves of the healing of the tree that, that overshadows this river for the healing uh, of, of the nation. So it's a river 
And interesting, on the third day when God kind of sorted out the seed and the vegetation, we meet Andrew. And it just speaks to me that Andrew is a man who wholeheartedly jumped into the river of God right from the off. And that's what really struck me. I was really surprised when I saw uh, this connection. So in the passage we've just read, what did he uh, do? It says he, uh, he, he, he was clearly seeking wholeheartedly for life, for truth and meaning. He was following John the Baptist. You know, he was a great man. He was preaching. Uh, and and, and he was, uh, God sensed truth in him. So he had been following John the Baptist. Maybe this is the one. But when John says, no, look, this is the Lamb of God, what did he do? Oh, no, maybe, I've got, maybe I should just stay with you. He turned around immediately. Well, if this is the Lamb of God, this is actually what I'm looking for. I'm going to follow him. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Just immediately. I'm, I'm following with everything I can, but if I meet the Lord, yeah, I meet the Lord and, and, uh, and I can see it's him, I'm going to follow him. So he, he deviates immediately and jumps in. I'm going to follow uh, the Lord. And then Jesus, and he's following with John, and he, uh, Jesus turns around and sees them following him. What do you want? What do you want? That's, that's quite a question. Well, if Jesus would ask you that, what do you want? I don't know what you would ask for. But, uh, and that could have been off, could be, maybe Jesus was challenging him. You know, what, what, do you, what do you want? What do you really want? And uh, Andrew could have been put off at that point. You know, if I ask, you know, if you, if, uh, if uh, I ask you what, do you what do you want, you know, it could be, ooh, <laughs> Um, they could stand back. But what did Andrew say? I want to... Uh, what did he say? He said... Uh, what do you want, Rabbi? Uh, where are you staying? Again, wholeheartedly, you know. I, I want to I see the stuff of life that you live. I want to be where you are. Where are you staying? I want to go there. You know, again, sort of just... just really, and the Lord says, come and spend the day with me. And he spends a whole day uh, with the Lord. And then he, he, he senses that this is the Lord. So what does he do? Does he hide under a bushel what he's seen? No, he immediately goes to his brother, Peter, and says, oh, we have, I have found the Messiah. Come. So even in those kind of few verses, I see a man. I see a guy just jumping in immediately. You know, just here, here it is. Here's the Lord. I want to see everything about him. And uh, this passage, I remember this, this, the word see. So I want to see everything about it. I want to jump in with everything I have. And if I found it, well, I'm going to grab others. And we're going to jump in together. That was, uh, that was uh, Andrew. And immediately we go, he, he's, he was on a journey with uh, Jesus. He goes to the wedding of Canaan. And again, water kind of. Now, the end of our, ourselves, you know, uh, the, the wa there was only water at this wedding, but Jesus um, turned the water into wine, into abundance. And Andrew saw this, the abundance of God's grace. And uh, it says, uh, Jesus revealed his glory and the disciples put their faith in him. And then chapter 2 on, and John, he goes, in, he goes with, with uh, Jesus to Jerusalem. They see miraculous signs. And John and Andrew witnesses the zeal of Jesus. Remember the, the tables that were being used by um, merchants in the temple and he overturned the tables. He sees the zeal of the Lord, you know, not this half-heartedness, the zeal of the Lord to overturn tables. And uh, this should be a house of prayer uh, for everyone. And so Andrew sees that too. And then he goes on to Samaria with Jesus. And it looks like if we put the chronology of Andrew's life together, they go back to Capernaum. He takes up fishing a bit again before more, uh, a more serious call from Jesus. And what happens at the call of Andrew? Remember, it's uh, Peter and Simon. They'd, be had, they'd been fishing all night, hadn't caught anything. Jesus teaching. And Jesus says, go and put out your boat. And they put out their nets. Um, in Luke chapter 5, you know, um, it talks about Peter, but it says they, Andrew's brother, they worked together. Andrew was clearly in the boat as well. And put out your nets, and we know what happened. There was an abundance of fish when they hadn't caught anything. Again, this kind of river of blessing and of grace that Andrew uh, saw. Such a great quantity of fish. And Jesus called them, Peter and, and, uh, and Andrew, uh, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. 
And later, John chapter 6, we see Jesus uh, teaching and then there's no food. Again, mankind getting to the, to the end of themselves, to the lim- to limits, and, um, seeing this need of people around, hungry. And uh, what are they going to do? There's 5,000 folks on this mountainside. And who is it? It's Andrew who says, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. And so it's Andrew that brings uh, the loaves and the fish and the boy to Jesus because he senses that somehow there is more that, that Jesus can do to multiply. He, se- he senses the river. He's, he's in the river. He knows God can, Jesus can provide. There's no holding back for him. That. Later, Matthew chapter 10, we find Jesus sending out the 12, and Andrew's mentioned amongst the other 12. Heal every kind of disease, drive out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead. Freely you have been given, freely give. There's all that kind of free flowing uh, grace and anointing of God. Don't worry about bags and staff and what to say and not to say. God cares for the sparrows, he'll care for you. Uh, even the hairs of your uh, hair are numbered. So a calling to go out and freely give uh, all that you have been given. Again, and Andrew was one of those that went out and, and gave uh, what everything that he had with those other disciples. And, and later we see Greeks coming, John chapter 12, coming to Philip, and they wanted to see Jesus. And uh, um, they first of all came to Philip, and Philip came to Andrew and said, well, Let's bring them to Jesus. And, and uh, they bring them to Jesus. And Jesus speaks this great uh, message. Well, now the Son of Man is about to be glorified. And he talks about the grain of wheat that will, needs to die before it gives life. Those that love their life will lose it. Those who hate it will keep it to eternal life. Whoever serves me will follow me. And the Father will honor the one who serves me. A calling to radical, costly following of Uh, Jesus. And in that passage we read, um, Jesus says, Father, glorify your name. And a voice from heaven comes, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And then there's thunder. It's just like wherever Andrew is, is kind of immersed in, in, in God's grace. And now it's radical discipleship he's called to, and that's what he does. And so Andrew there's not m- many more mentions of him, but he's clearly part of the passion. Uh, he sees Jesus washing feet. Uh, he sees the crucifixion and the resurrection. And there's one other verse in the Bible, Acts chapter 1, verse 13, where it's mentioned of Andrew. He's waiting after the resurrection in the upper room for the filling of, for the Holy Spirit to come. Again, he's waiting for the river to come. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a... A whistle-stop tour of uh, Andrew. But one thing I had we, uh, that is so noticeable, there's a few mentions of Andrew, the brave one, uh, who jumped in the river. But often he's not in that kind of elite band. Remember up the Mount of Transfiguration, there was um, uh, Peter, James, and John, but not Andrew. Gethsemane, there was Peter, James, and John, but not Andrew. Other moments, uh, it was like, almost like the, these other disciples uh, where... Uh, at, at the forefront, but Andrew wasn't. I just find that so significant. There was no indication that he was bitter about it, resentful. In the quietness of what I can do, of me reaching out, I'm just going to receive and uh, be all that God wants me to be. So that's what I love about Andrew. <laughs> he was a man who uh, jumped into the river, this river of the kingdom of God, who saw healing, who certainly experienced healing, immersed himself in all that God had for him and wanted to give it to others. He brought Jesus, uh, Peter to Jesus and the, the boy with the loaves to Jesus and Greeks to Jesus, just full of it. And uh, after um, the Gospels, uh, tradition says he, 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 he preached the Gospel uh, in many places like Ukraine and Russia and Romania, all these kind of places, and they... And, and there's some traditions that say he came to Scotland. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if he did, but maybe he did. But that, he's the patron saint of Scotland. Um, maybe one of his relics got brought there. But there's a association with Scotland. Um, he certainly, he who jumped in the river, he, 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 the echoes of his life are spread far, far afield. And even, uh, to, even as well to Scotland. 
river of life is flowing. Brothers and sisters, the river of life is flowing. Andrew jumped in. Do you want to jump in? Do you want to be immersed? I know sometimes we just want to, uh, we, we just stay in the edge or maybe we're, we've had an ankle experience. I believe the Lord wants us to, to jump in, to receive more from him. You know, whatever he's called us to do in the gifts we have, men and women, to be brave, to receive everything he wants us to give. And this river is not, and I'll finish with this, this river is not a trickle. It isn't a trickle, brothers and sisters. It, there is a, a river that will flow to the very ends of time for, of healing for the nations. The other kind of passages, in the, if you read the, the lectionary about for this day, are psalms like 87, glorious things are spoken of you. Peoples from Egypt and Babylonia, Philistia, and Cush and Tyre will acknowledge you. All the world will be part of it. They will make music and sing. All my fountains are in you. Psalm 96, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, O families of the earth. Worship God in, splendor, in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Yeah, there's, there's, there's difficult times, isn't there? We're living in difficult times. But the river of life is not becoming a trickle. It isn't a trickle. It is. The Lord is doing new things in these days. And I feel, I feel encouraged, um, especially with those who are coming to faith that we would not expect amongst uh, uh, for, uh, intellectual folks um, in, in, in our culture. I don't know. Folks like Paul uh, Kingsnorth, who is an uh, ardent environmentalist, he's, he's come to faith in Christ, and he, he, he thought he was miles away from it. And Tom Holland, you've heard of a, a historian, written about different cultures, and he's written an amazing book called Dominion, about you know, how, how the Judeo-Christian faith is at the root of everything, and we're just, we're just crashing it, we're, we're uprooting everything. But, but actually, all, even human rights is just based on, on the fact we're in, made in the image of God right from the roots of Christian faith. And he is slowly coming to the Lord, this great, a great historian. And, and I was reading a few days ago, Bayek Tirsi Ali, part of the New Atheist Movement, has now shed that. And she's coming, she's on a faith journey. She's probably already got there to faith in Christ. These kind of people with brains this size <laughs> realizing that there is a river of life, that every, life, everything else does not lead to life, it leads to death. And there's no hope, and there's no hope for our Western culture if we don't come back to this river of life, the kingdom of God, of forgiveness, of grace, of new life, new strength. The river of life is pouring out. The media will not uh, uh, talk about it or present it, but I see signs, we see signs everywhere that the Lord is still at work and he's calling each one of us to jump into the river of life. Do you want more? Do you want more? The Lord wants you. Wants, he wants to give you more. Jump in, brothers and sisters. Jump in. Go and get your swimming trunks. No, just, <laughs> as Steve said, as you are, clothes and all, as you are, jump in. The Lord, I believe that's what God's calling us to in these days. More of you, Lord, more of you. Immerse me in your love. At the end of the service, we're going to uh, just listen to a, a track, uh, Find Me uh, in the River. Uh, I'm afraid we can't play it now because uh, we're transmitting uh, online for copyright reasons, but we will play it at the end of our service. So do go and have a look at it, Find Me in the River. I think it says it all by Martin Smith. Find me in the river, find me there. Find me on my knees with my soul laid bare. Even though you're gone, or it feels like you're gone, but you're not, and I'm cracked and dry, find me in the river, I'm waiting there. <coughs> find me in the river, I'm waiting there. Lord bless you.
Lord Jesus, thank you that you call each one of us to, to come and follow you. And it is the desire of our hearts, Lord, <coughs> to follow you because we have seen in you something that we have seen in no one else. And we know of your love for us because of your death on the cross to win us to yourself, to forgive us of our sin, to enable us to lay our burdens down. We bless you, Lord. And we ask, Holy Spirit, please, that you would help us to follow. Help us to come and lay our burdens down. Help us to come and seek forgiveness for our sin. Help us to come and be ourselves with you. Not to hold anything back. And Lord, during this month of uh, November, we have uh, been aware of, of men's health issues. And, and so, Lord, let's stop for a moment. We just want to pray for, for the men gathered, for, for the men watching online, for, for men in our communities, those men who are on our hearts and minds. And just if the Spirit, if the Spirit prompts you and you want to pray out loud or short, prayer, uh, please do so. Otherwise, just pray quietly in your heart. But let's just bring, bring men's health issues to the Lord. Lord, the statistics are, are grave. Um, and I don't want to, um, to share them, Lord, because statistics are statistics and, and people are people. And so we, we're just aware that there are issues. And thank you for organizations like Movember that will draw attention to, to the fact, to signpost men, to, to ask for help. And, and Lord, we, we pray right now for every man across this nation, for every man across the globe who is calling out to you or who may just be in a in a dark pit and can't call out to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you get into that pit with them. Open their eyes and the eyes of their hearts to see you, that they may, may receive from you your love and your grace, your healing and your, your forgiveness, your freedom, Lord. Thank you. And we pray, Lord, for freedom. Pray for freedom for, for the many men who are caught in captivity. Who are caught in captivity to the lie that, that they can't be themselves. They can't reveal vulnerability. And who will seek alternative measures to to try to, to be who they can't be with drink or drugs or, or the various addictions that are so freely available today. Lord, we pray for release and for freedom for men who are in captivity today. And we pray too, Lord, for, for young men, for teenagers, for young boys who are having to navigate this uh, extraordinary world that we find ourselves in at this moment. We ask, Lord, that you would protect them, protect their hearts and minds. And that you would reveal yourself to them, Lord. wants to 
to offer a prayer, please feel free to do so. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the many organizations that are uh, at work to, to help. I just pray your blessing on them, Lord, for the resources they need to be able to do the work they do, for funding, for um, the personnel. And thank you, Lord, for just for raising the awareness today we may ourselves be able to signpost people in need, men and women, boys and girls, young and old. That we may, like Andrew, bring people to Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all, for all people. Lord, we know that all people are on your radar. And we bring all people to you, Lord. And we ask that you would rest on all people. As you continue your work, your zealous work, to bring about your government on earth as it is in heaven, bringing about your kingdom where there is justice and truth, salvation, healing, comfort, peace, miracles, the presence of God, Bring about your kingdom on earth, Lord. As it is in heaven, we pray. And we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to finish our time of worship together as we sing this, this golden oldie. We haven't sung this for ages, and it's just such a lovely hymn. Come down, O love divine. It's just such a lovely hymn. Just uh, enjoy the words of the hymn as they let the Spirit speak to you as you sing them and as you speak to Him through them.
let's receive the blessing from the Lord. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all who you love this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us and may you be blessed today. Be blessed as those who travel today. Amen.